This is Jerry A. Capitadupo, Miami Beach, Florida, across from the Miami International Airport. I'm still in a hotel. Today is January 30th, 2024. I'll probably take this video down by tomorrow morning. It depends how many hits I get on it. I have three channels, Jerry Capitalupo 9195, Jerry Capitalupo 1277, and Jerry Capitalupo 9601. Be careful about this voice of God weapon. You probably have no idea what it really is. When I uh, pray, and I just noticed this today, and I've noticed it before, but if I am praying, and there are different ways to pray, there's contemplative, and then there's meditation, and then there's the regular talking to God, which is the lowest form of prayer. Let me say, you know, dear God, Jesus, what is it that you want me to do? And uh, Rocky, the retarded AI, which is my nickname for it, because I'm under remote neural monitoring and brain computer interface since 2011. And it's, it has changed a lot. It tries to answer on behalf of God. It says, of course, and you've probably heard of it, move up leave, win. I thank God that I can discern between the computer and my own thoughts. And I can discern between what may be demonic and evil thoughts or spirits and the communication that Almighty God is sending me. And it's not always in words. So be careful. Don't just think that you speak and God speaks back in English. It's a communication on a higher level. It's body, it's mind, and it's your soul. But I would bet that there are a lot of people out there that are convinced that it really is God. I made a short video. I'm not sure what channel it's on, how I was in St. Patrick's Church off of Godfrey Road. It's just right over the bridge from the Miami International Airport. It's the only church that is open all day because there's a Catholic school there. And I would stay there all day and pray and pray. And one time, a woman... A young woman with her sister came in, and she was very nice, and I believe that she believed in Jesus Christ, and uh, she started talking about the Holy Spirit and uh, the messages that she was getting. She even gave me a brand new wooden rosary, and then she prayed over me, pretty much whether I liked it or not, and then tried to give me some advice on what the Holy Spirit was saying. And I noticed it was a bit odd. She may be in communion with the Holy Spirit at times. And also, I, I believe that she's also being subjected to this voice of God weapon. Because she was firm about telling me that I should leave Miami. You know, you should leave. This is one of the messages, this voice of God weapon, for short, we'll call it the psychotronic voice to skull, has been giving me for the past 14 years, even before it started, in 2001. But you know, I'm going to give a quick rundown on why I became a targeted individual in 2001. And it was for two years, 2001 and 2002, my little apartment was subjected to direct energy weapons. I didn't even know these existed until 2011. But I became very sick. And uh, I could feel it slightly. When I left the little room, I was living in 
Lynn, Massachusetts at the time. I couldn't feel it, but as soon as I walked in the door, I could feel it. And what happened was, I have two college degrees. I have a bachelor's and a master's degree. And in Boston Public Schools, where I was, where I was teaching or trying to, they don't teach psychology. So I ended up having to be a substitute teacher, which is very degrading for somebody that has a bachelor's and a master's degree in state certifications and excellent letters of recommendation. And uh, more than that, it wasn't just one school. I was going to all the schools in Boston. Sometimes every day would be a different school, sometimes a grammar school, sometimes a middle school, sometimes a high school, from first grade all the way to 12. And it was in the year 2021, no, uh, 2001, and earlier, 2000, that I learned of the genocide that was happening. And I would type up what was going on and I would leave it in the schools. And then after a while, I started going around to the different classes and because you go in as a substitute teacher, you can pretty much do what you want to run the class. And I remember talking to them and whether it was first grade, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, all the way to twelfth. I've been to Dorchester High, Boston Latin, elementary, even kindergarten at times. But I would tell them, you know, I would say, you know, boys and girls, you know what genocide is. And they would listen, and I would tell them about what was happening in Israel. I was pretty naive. And I says, well, what we're planning to do is to get many signatures and then contacting the president and the secretary of defense and going to Washington and protesting. The genocide. This was back in 2021, shortly after 9-11. So I gathered, because I'm going around to different schools every day here and there, thousands of signatures from Boston public school children and leaving letters on teachers' desks about what was happening. I was really naive and quite ignorant. And I wrote a letter you know, snail mail, typed letter in an envelope, one to President Bush and one to Colin Powell. And I'll tell you, it got through because when they found out what I was doing, all hell broke loose. That's when I originally began to become a targeted individual. And I'll tell you, for you people that are protesting, the, 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 the that are protesting the genocide, that are pro-Palestinians, they're not going to let you go. Because this was 24 years ago. And they don't give up. And to make a long story short, to the ends of two, at the end of 2002, I agreed to call it all off. I said, the heck with this. You know, I knew what was happening and... Uh, it was gang stalking in the street and the schools and you know again I didn't know anything about direct energy weapons I didn't know they existed and I certainly didn't know about psychotronic voice to skull until 10 years later 2011 but I went into religious discernment and it wasn't until 2011 when the direct energy weapons and psychotronics broke out along with the gang stalking because I refused to be a CIA operative They ended up put me in, putting me in the hospital 35 times from 2011 to 2014, four years, including about four times in a psych unit temporarily. And, you know, I managed to give these psychiatrists the information four times, maybe five times, because I have a bachelor's and a master's and I show them all the evidence. And it blew their mind. And I'll tell you, not only were they scared, but the doctors were scared, the police were scared, the people were scared. And a lot of people didn't know, a lot of priests didn't know, a lot of people didn't know. And this is, this is back, uh, back in 2011 when it began. I left the religious order in 2004, I left Boston Public Schools. 
and then I traveled around to different monasteries. I won't get too much into that, but I lived in Hawaii for 10 years, from 2005 to 2014 when I left. But the direct energy weapons and psychotronics didn't break out until 2011. So 2005, normal. Six, normal. 2007, normal. 2008, normal. 2009, normal. 2010, normal. 2011, on the day bin Laden died, that's when all hell broke loose. And that's when I realized 9-11 is an inside job. And there are direct energy weapons. And I was being sub subjected to direct energy weapons in 2001 and 2002. So I left in December of 2014 because I've had enough. It was just, just unbelievable. And uh, it was 2014 that I ended up spending four days in intensive care and then another 10 days in the hospital. And from there, I went briefly to Massachusetts where actually I was there for less than six weeks and it was quiet, like everything was normal. So I didn't know what was going to happen. And this was 2015, January, February and such. And then 2015, I went to Washington DC for a couple years and tried to do something about these direct energy weapons and psychotronics. And after six weeks, I suppose that's how long it takes for the satellites or I don't know what. Uh, the psychotronics kicked in. Not the direct energy weapons. I think maybe, well, actually they did sort of kick in here and there, maybe, maybe 10 times, you know, or, but nothing like Hawaii. Hawaii is, is, is absolutely sadistic. So I was there for a couple years. I was there when Pope Francis came to Washington. I spent some time at the Franciscan Monastery of the Holy Land. I was there in 2003 for a couple months. But being there again in 2015, the gang stalking was horrendous all around the monastery or teenagers and such. They, and they come right into the church. And the psychotronics voice to skull is loud. I mean, there's no mistaking it. It's as loud as my voice inside my head. So you can understand that the last place these satanic Zionist Jews or the satanic Luciferian uh, Catholic Church, because the Catholic Church is in on it, and the Masons or whatever, but they certainly didn't want me with the Franciscans of the Holy Land, because if I got in as a Franciscan, the first place they would send me it would be to Israel, because they have the custody of all the churches in Israel and in the Middle East. So I was really under attack there. I got to know Brother Sebastian, who was temporary temporarily the caretaker there. And I remember telling Brother Sebastian uh, twice, something I've never really told any monk or any, I said, you know, you're mentally ill. You, you've got a serious problem. And uh, if you go online and you go even to the YouTube, you'll find out that Brother Sebastian was apparently the first death from COVID pandemic, it was the first one, and you can still you can still see it. It uh, on it was on CNN and such. What they didn't tell you is that when I was there, several times I ran into him when he was on his way to the hospital because he had leukemia. He didn't have a hair on his head, but he had a unbelievable, wicked, bad temper. Anyway, I stood there for a few years and I realized it was completely hopeless and uh, 
in Washington, D.C. Then from there I went to New York, New York for a couple years and lived around the Times Square. It wasn't too bad there. Absolutely no direct energy weapons and the psychotronics was was not too bad, but still it I was subjected to it and such. And then after that I came to Florida. So from Hawaii to Massachusetts, I was born in Boston, to Washington DC, that's three, to New York, New York, four, and then in Florida. And I stood here longer than I wanted to because I ended up being injured and I went for eye surgery and the doctor even made it worse. So I would have been long gone. Here in Florida, the direct energy weapons in the beginning, again, it takes about six weeks for it, for it to kick in. Uh, there really wasn't any direct energy weapons and such, and then the psychotronics voice of skull started to kick in. But it was very automated and such, but it wasn't too bad, but it was, it was bad enough. And the direct energy weapons were pretty bad here and there. And in Hawaii, they can be done by satellite, by drones, or by handheld. So I didn't know where it was happening here. And uh, I believe it was coming from uh, either satellite or drones or such, because it's, I was hooked up to what is called remote neural monitoring. They have full control over your body and your body and your mind. You can be killed at any moment. Anytime, anywhere. It may take a few days to readjust the satellites if they really want to uh, take you out. And then after, I believe it was a couple years, the direct energy weapons just disappeared and then it was almost constant, pretty much constant, psychotronic voice to skull. But then again, it was pretty much automated and such. And there was a, a great deal of gang stalking. This is, this is not a good place when it comes to Christ. This is, this is, the, this is one of the, of the capitals of, of the new world order of the Antichrist. And then I noticed the vocabulary was different. In 220 when COVID came in, I noticed it was a little bit of a change. And then in 221 I noticed the psychotronics really changed. And there was a patent, and that's when I realized they rolled it out to everybody because, because I noticed it. Because I walk around, I'm dressed all in black, and I wear a pretty big St. Benedict, Benedictine crucifix on the outside of my clothes. Because I would be constantly threatened everywhere I go. Like never... Like never like no place else. But in 221, it began, and then as time went on, I'm never interacting with it or trying to, not to interact with it. I just turn and pray, turn and pray, turn and pray. But it grew. It grew and it changed from 21 throughout the year to 22, again throughout the year to 23 throughout the year. Then it changed a little bit when uh, Israel was attacked, which I believe and I can prove was a, was a false flag. It gave them a reason to do what they're doing now. But nobody knows how it changed. You know, it can be pretty frustrating when I talk to people about what a targeted individual is, and they never heard of it. I don't know what it is. I've never heard of it. Oh, really? Or oh, some people have. Or I tell them what direct energy weapons are, and some have heard about it, some haven't. Eh, whatever. We try to talk to them about being a targeted individual and being subjected to psychotronic voice to skull. Nobody can even come close to relating to that, or even come close to, to what it's like to be targeted with direct energy weapons. And telling them about remote neuromonitoring brain-computer interface, and it's gone on for so long throughout the states. 
you might get a response where they say, yes, I understand, you know, I've heard about this. I've heard about MK Ultra. I've, uh, yeah, you know, I'm very interested, but, but there's no empathy. They just don't understand. If I tell people that, you know, all hell broke loose in 2011, it's followed me across the United States for the past 14 years, direct energy weapons, psychotronics, and the gang stalking. But what the hell is this gang stalking compared to direct energy weapons and psychotronics? Now it's just psychotronics. I'd like to tell you what kind of direct energy weapons you are receiving now, but I'm not going to because they will take down the video. There are 500,000, half a million cell phone towers in America, and you all are playing with 5G now. And remote neuromonitoring gray computer interface has been rolled out to the general public since 21. There's no doubt about that, because things have been upgraded. Things are more sophisticated, and they're doing it very, very slow. And what makes me a little angry, well, I don't know about angry or just upset about is that all these Christians, and they don't know who or what Jesus Christ is. They're waiting for Jesus Christ to come out of the clouds. The second coming of Christ, he's coming. He's not coming. He's not coming out of the clouds like Superman. That's just not going to happen. This is a Luciferian kingdom. His kingdom is not of this world. Where people are talking about the book of Revelation, what is the abomination of desolation? You have all these preachers, oh, it's this, it's that, it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's where uh, the evil one is, where it should not be in the temple. It will make you desolate. And they don't understand that the abomination of desolation is psychotronic voice to skull. It's the remote neural monitoring brain computer interface, which will make the person desolate. Because not only are they trying to stop freedom of speech, they're trying to stop freedom of thought. I was just watching a video where the, the pastor took it very literally. And when this happens, you should flee to the mountains. The mountains are a symbol of the elevated chakras. Just like when they talk about the rapture. They're all going to wait for the rapture and people are just going to disappear and you're going to fly up into heaven, into the clouds with Jesus Christ. Don't take it literally. I thank God... I'm in the rapture right now. I'm already in the rapture, and other people are in the rapture. The second coming of Christ has already come for me. 2,000 years ago, Jesus said, this generation will not pass away until the second coming of Jesus Christ. The second coming of Jesus Christ comes from the inside. I tell people, go on YouTube and text in sacred secretions, Christ oil. K-E-R-R, Kerr, that's the woman that does the audio, the video. And you'll learn that Christ is within us. He is also outside of us. As even Jesus Christ says, the kingdom of God is outside and inside. But you know, then there's the argument when we we're learning now about uh, quantum physics and biocentrism. I made a short one minute video about biocentrism and they didn't take it down. But what they did, which was peculiar, and they did it for about a week, a week and a half, they locked it. So I couldn't share it with anybody. I talked a little bit about the double slit experiment, quantum physics, superimposition, because everybody has it wrong. You check out biocentrism Robert Lanza, there are a couple of videos. There are part one, part two, and you can buy his book, you can learn about it. It breaks down everything. The soul is not in the body. You see? 
your soul is a pro your soul projects the body the body is a projection of the soul and then you have the body mind a projection of the soul on a higher level when you die and there is no death actually your body decays and goes back into the earth because that's what you're made of you're made of the the earth everything you find in the soil you're made of And because your mind is also made up of material matter, although I don't want to get into it now, there is no material world, no physical world. Your soul lives on. And if your soul has ascended and you followed God's laws, your next incarnation, you will be given a higher vehicle. The goal is to either ascend to a higher level because you're in the fourth dimension, and there are 13 of them. Maybe you can get to the fifth, the sixth, the tenth, the eleventh. The goal is to get to the thirteenth or above that to what we call being with God. God lives outside of time, outside of a time-space dimension. The Buddhists call it being off the wheel of samsara. So you're not born and you're not die, you don't die. You're not, you, there's no more births and deaths, births and deaths, births and deaths. You're there, one with Almighty God, the Father, the creator of heaven and earth, all that is seen and unseen.